Yes. Did some people come on this side? Can you get kind of close, so I can't. Yeah, yeah. Get behind. Yeah, yeah like behind too, yeah. Yeah. Anybody on that side? Of, I mean, you can you come on this side? Sure. Anybody on that side of Priscilla, I don't have you in the picture. Oh. Priscilla's the last one. On the other side? Uh, yes. Or on the step or something. Or, I don't have him. Who? On the end, the gentleman right there. The handsome guy? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and on the stairs. And on the stairs, huh? Well, you have too much confidence to the handsome guy. Sorry. Okay. All right. We good? We good. Well, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I just want to say, you know, thank you for coming out. Um, I think this is very important right now, around election time, that I really make my feelings heard around how I feel about the current leadership out here. My name is Kenneth Chamberlain Jr. and I am a community advocate and police reform activist right here in this city of White Plains, New York. For many years now, I have worked with individuals, partnered with different organizations, including elected officials, with the objective of building stronger relationships and trusting relationships between law enforcement and the community. It is my passion that brings me here today. But I stand here before you today, not only as a longtime resident of this city, but I also stand here today as a family member of a victim of injustice in this city. Many of you know that roughly now going on six years, my father, Kenneth Chamberlain Sr. was shot and killed in his home at Winbrook Housing when he inadvertently triggered his life aid pendant that he wore around his neck because he suffered from a heart condition and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. They mocked his military service. They taunted him. Expletives and racial slurs were hurled at him. They eventually took the door of his hinges by an electronic taser, beanbag shotgun, and then live ammunition shooting and killing him. Now, the reason that I'm bringing that up is I had to set the background so you really understand or fully understand where I'm going with this. Although there was a failure to indict or hold these officers accountable in any way for the killing, that was not only an insult to my family, but you failed the community, you failed the city, and that is a failure of leadership in this, in this city. As far as I'm concerned and in my opinion, and I was just speaking about this earlier, one of the highest levels of leadership is integrity and it seems as if the current leadership has lost sight of that and when you compromise ethics you are what unethical and when unethical behavior becomes the order of the day that's not just a problem for myself that's a problem for all parties involved everyone in this city In the past six years, 
of dealing with the elected officials out here, I found that there seems to be two different cities of White Plains. You have the haves and you have the have-nots. Right. Race and class play a role in how incidents are dealt with out here, how people are handled out here. And the killing of Kenneth Chamberlain Sr. is a perfect example of that. From, the, from his killing to the immediate justification of the killing without even conducting an investigation. From it taking the city over five months to even extend its condolences to my family. And then a bogus 83 page independent analysis report that maybe four paragraphs were dedicated to the killing of my father, but it cost the taxpayers $25,000. I've often said time and time again that leadership in this city is compromised. And when leadership is compromised, leadership must change. And this is why I am here this morning. Because it's time to put people in place who care about all of the people, not some of the people. It's time to put people in place who recognize and value everyone's opinion out here regardless of socioeconomic status. So this is why I stand here today in support of Milagros Lacuna for the next mayor of the city of White Plains, New York. Get out there and vote. Please do not be fooled by proclamations and handshakes. Don't be fooled because the current leadership does not care. And as they say, or there's an old saying that people say, your handshake is not matching your smile. Mm. So we don't believe it, we're not buying it. I'm urging people to get out there and vote. Get out there and vote. Now, I have uh, Damon K. Jones from Blacks and Law Enforcement who's going to say a few words. Uh, good morning. Good morning. My name is Damon K. Jones. I'm the New York representative of Blacks and Law Enforcement. And I also hold different positions in other community organizations, but I'm standing here today as the New York representative of Blacks and Law Enforcement, 28 years in the Westchester County Department of Corrections. Me and Kenneth Chamberlain, we go back to the diaper days. And his father, which the press really does not talk about a lot, is a retired correction officer from the Westchester County Jail. So, I feel it on both ends, what happened to Kenneth Chamberlain Sr. And as a law enforcement professional for over 28 years, to hear the audio tape of the White Plains police officers mocking Mr. Chamberlain and calling him racial epithets, it's, very, it's embarrassing to the law enforcement profession. And as a black officer, it's heartening that we really haven't come forward in all these years as we thought that we did when we, we, when we still, by law enforcement that are paid by our tax dollars, disrespects seniors and disrespects people of color. But in the process of trying to find accountability from the White Plains municipality and trying to seek answers, it, it was heartbreaking that elected officials treated this situation so badly. Um, Kenneth Chamberlain mentioned the report, and we took the report, and we took it to Jackson State criminal justice uh, professor Jimmy Bell, and he did a report on the report. And what the report stated, that there was many violations of civil and human rights violations of Kenneth Chamberlain and the lack of training and accountability from the White Plains Police Department. But what happens after that? Did they change it? Absolutely not, because there are continual incidences from the White Plains Police Department and management has not been held accountable by the mayor. I have walked the streets of White Plains and people of color say, well, he's for us. How can he be for you when he doesn't hold anyone accountable that will actually call someone that looks like you the N-word? How can he be for you? So if he's not for you, then he's against you. But we cannot, we cannot be fooled by that. And I hope the people of White Plains understand that it's time to change leadership 
in the mayorship position. It's time to change leadership in the different city council, people that we still have here to move forward that will support our candidate in her agenda and to change white, and, and to change white plains. And we also must stand with her and we must support her and we must spread, and we must actually spread the word, you know, cause she's, she's going up against the democratic machine. I saw something on Facebook, they said, well, she's a Republican and she's coming over to Democrats and all this. You know, let's not be hypocritical. I can name a couple of Republicans that switched over to Democrats that the Democratic chair welcomed with open arms. Uh, Y'all remember Janet DeFiore? She was a Republican and switched over to Democrat. You know, my friend, Mike Spano, was a Republican and switched over to Democrat. And the, Democrat, the Democratic Party welcomed them with open arms. Well, why they're not welcoming our sister? Because she's not for the status quo. That's why they're not welcome. She, because she's going to do for the people. That's why they're not welcome. So let's stand and support our sister. And we support you from Blacks and Law Enforcement of America. And we're going to let this Facebook uh, go viral so everybody can see. And hopefully, they will come out and support you on September 12th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is really my honor to accept this very, very important endorsement from everything that it means. I am actually a Democrat. I haven't changed party. What <laughs> happened is that the Republicans also see on me something that definitely, it seems like less and less people is seen in our present mayor, which is integrity, and definitely the leadership is compromised. And I am here to tell you that as an urban planner, I have been all my life, for years and years, working in community development, trying to bring the community together. For me, everybody is the same. And yes, I will put the smile and the shake of hand in the same place. And my heart is with everybody. Everybody is the same, the South, the North, the East, and the West side of, of White Plains. And I have to tell you that we have to work together with the police. Yes, there are problems out there, but it can be solved. What cannot be solved is when we don't recognize the problem, when we hide behind words. We have to be upfront, we have to be honest, and we have to be putting integrity for everything that we do. And therefore, I am very, very humble to accept this endorsement, and I am looking forward to work with the community as a whole. And thank you, thank you so much. And I am here also with some of the members of the slate that uh, are going to be also a wonderful addition to the city and we're going to change the entire energy that is happening right now in City Hall. There is a lot of work that needs to be done there, and we are ready for doing right. that. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's it. That's, that's really that's good. Job. That, that is really all, unless you want to speak. Would you like to say a few words? Okay. <laughs> got an we asked there. an attorney to speak right now. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. My name is Saad Siddiqui, and I'm a candidate for Common Council of White Plains. And before I was a candidate for Common Council of White Plains, I've been an activist, excuse me, and a board member of the Civil Liberties Union. I've also been a member, of staff attorney with the Legal Aid Society. So I will say this. There is nothing more important in keeping a city going than maintaining communication between members of law enforcement and members of the community. And that is something we need to have in this city in a much stronger capacity. We have a good city. It can only get better if that's what we have, and that's what we're looking to do. I'm very honored to have Ted's endorsement and support because there's much work to be done. It needs to get better. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, we will definitely, this is going live on Facebook, and we're asking that any of the people who are friends on Facebook, please take it, please share it. Please encourage people to get out there on Tuesday and, and vote. Respect out here in this city of White Plains, and let's, let's change this city and make this a city, like I said, for all the people, not some of the people. And, and and what is the tagline? Together, we can make a we can make a better white place. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
Trial and error, I learned my lessons. <laughs> 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 